and welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, my name is Lee Angold. I'm a Botanical and Natural Science Illustrator in Kitchener-Waterloo, Canada. Um, on this channel, I share some of my techniques for watercolor and other illustration techniques, as well as giving you some insight into my life as an illustrator. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. Um, so today I promised that I was going to do a speed paint, um, show you some of my techniques for my finished illustrations with some cattails that I collected in my last video. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's not going to work out. Um, and here, I'll show you why. Um, but I came into a bit of a shocker. So here we go. I'm just going to pan over. So here... We have my paper where I was going to start sketching and here, whoa, 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 whoa. So long story short, my subjects exploded all over my studio. It was a real pain to clean up. Um, and so I haven't had time to set up another illustration. Um, so that'll be my next video as I'll be showing you some of my illustration techniques. But for today, I thought we'd just have a nice little studio chat. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk today about, uh, well, first of all, what is my job? What does a natural science illustrator do? And also how I came to be here and how I, how I got this to be my job. Um, so uh, if you'd like to join me, um, grab a nice hot cup of coffee or tea, whatever you prefer. I've got an oolong tea in my nice studio mug right now. Um, and uh, let's get started. question that I get is uh, what do you do and you know I say well I'm a natural science illustrator or I'm a botanical illustrator and then the next question is what's that um, so basically I draw plants um, as well as other natural science subjects skulls bugs crusty twigs um, and then the next question is well is there a market for that and the answer is yes uh, so I get some commercial commissions, um, particularly with botanical. There's a huge demand for botanical illustrations for product labels. Um, so, for example, you know, jams made with uh, weird berries. Uh, I did an elderberry illustration recently, for example. Um, there's also uh, decorative markets, so I sell greeting cards, and I've, ha I've been commissioned to do some designs. Um, I also get a number of private commissions, both for botanical illustration and other natural science illustrations. People have their favorite things or their interests that they want illustrated. I do some teaching. Um, and most recently, I've been really focused on building up my portfolio to get some more um, scientific, like, educational commissions. Um, I'd like to do textbooks um, and illustrations for popular science magazines and stuff, so I'm just um, adjusting my portfolio to showcase more of that. Um, and then the next question is, okay, well, so that's really specific. Um, how do you get there? Uh, so for me, this was you know, I don't know that this is really the usual path. Uh, my understanding is that most natural science illustrators sort of fall into this um, and discover it later on. But for me, it was a childhood dream. Um, you know, I found out about natural science illustration very, very early on. Um, so I was running around when I was seven years old telling everyone I'm going to be a biology illustrator. <laughs> um, 
But even still, you know, it wasn't a direct route. I took a decade-long scenic route, a detour uh, through civil engineering. So I actually have a civil engineering degree and I don't really have any degrees related to my field right now, which is interesting. Um, but I've now been a full-time illustrator for almost two years. Um, and I've been working as an illustrator for, for a few years before that, so four to five years. Um, so uh, that's, the, that's the summary. So in the rest of this video, I'll be going through more detail on my life path and also um, sharing some <laughs> possibly embarrassing photos. Uh, um, so stay tuned uh, and let's get going. Um, so I've always loved painting. I was lucky to have very, very supportive parents who encouraged me to chase my dreams. Um, when I was about three to four years old, um, my mom, who has a degree in anthropology, she used to work at a bones lab at the University of Toronto. Um, so she was preparing animal specimens that they got from the zoo or other sources um, so that they would have the bones for, for display or for, for study for the students. Um, and so she would let me tag along when I was only about three years old um, and I would go and pick at all the bones <laughs> and draw them. Um, so, you know, that was, that was my childhood and that was one of my favorite things and some of my favorite memories from when I was a child. Does that make me very strange? Um, uh, so, you know, my mom actually saved a number of the illustrations from back then, and as it turns out, it wasn't just animal bones. Um, I, I was going through these folders, and I found this one, which is labeled, it's in Portuguese, uh, Lee, Argonz de uma Pessoa from 1993. So I was four years old, and I'll throw this up on the screen. Um, and so what that, what the translation for that is, is, organs of a person and I just treated somebody blown up with all of their internal organs when I was four years old. Um, when I was about six or seven, uh, my mom took me to watch a documentary and I've looked for this artist since then. It was a uh, documentary about an artist, an illustrator, who had been hired to illustrate some insects on the upper canopy of the Amazon rainforest and because they didn't have a sense of um, what what the ecosystem there was like, um, they were hesitant to take back samples. Um, so what they did was they spread a large net over the canopy of the upper Amazon rainforest and dropped her down. And so she camped out on this net on the canopy of the Amazon, um, collecting insect specimens and illustrating them for uh, quite some time. Um, and I thought that was amazing. And so when I was six or seven years old, I decided that's my plan, that's what I want to do. And so from the time I was seven years old, through most of my childhood, I told everyone that I wanted to be a biology illustrator. From when I was seven years old to pretty much when I finished high school and beyond, um, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and I convinced my parents, I convinced my guidance counselor, I convinced all my teachers, I convinced everyone. I went so far as to, there's a biomedical communications program at U of T. I contacted them, um, and when I was 16, I took some summer courses with the BMC students. Um, I'll throw up some photos. So um, that's a fetal skull that I created uh, when I was 16 years old in a summer seminar with the biomedical communication students. So uh, at that point, I was in a dark room with <laughs> I guess you know, just five or six of us in a dark room with a bunch of bones with spotlights on them and I loved it and I was so sure that that was what I was going to do. But then I got to grade 12, um, which is our final year of high school in um, 
in Ontario where I live. Um, and I was in grade 12 and I started experiencing a lot of self-doubt. Um, all of my classmates were panicking about they had to decide what they were going to do in university and then of course that determines your whole future so everyone was panicking and making really sudden decisions about the rest of their life and I thought I should panic and make some really sudden decisions about the rest of my life too. And I think there was a real aspect of, you know, I had this plan but I liked it too much and so I was afraid to fail. I was afraid that if I tried to do scientific illustration and I didn't get into these competitive master's programs then my life would be ruined. Um, so it would be easier to do, do something that I liked less. Um, and around the same time I was dating someone um, and she was planning on going into engineering and kept on saying, well, you, you know, you should come with me. Um, and my mom said that I, should, I would probably do pretty well in engineering if I wanted a different option. And so I applied. I applied to a number of biology programs and I applied to a number of engineering programs in grade 12 and ended up going into um, engineering science at U of T. Now at this time I was still applying to biomedical engineering programs, so engineering science is like this uh, it's engineering for academia and so it's uh, all of these cutting-edge areas of engineering you get two years in a joint program and then you specialize and so my my initial plan was I was going to specialize in biomedical engineering um, and then go on to do uh, biomedical illustration at U of T um, and I had actually spoken to the program coordinators about the illustration program and they said yeah, you shouldn't do that, that's, that's not related. And, and for some reason I didn't listen, um, so I went into engineering science anyway. And so then I did engineering science at U of T, I started, and initially I really enjoyed it, there were a number of different sort of science fields that we were doing, um, so I kind of enjoyed it at first. Um, but it took up a, a huge amount of time, it's a very, very, very heavy program. So I wasn't drawing anymore, I wasn't doing art anymore. And I started to develop academic anxiety. Even when I stopped really enjoying myself and realized that uh, biomedical engineering wasn't really for me and engineering science wasn't really the program for me, I still stayed in engineering. I switched to civil engineering. Um, I spiraled into anxiety and depression and through the whole time I was, through the whole time I was in university at least, I was always looking forward to the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. Well, engineering school is really hard but work is going to be better. Um, and so um, early in my degree I actually met my now husband um, and we'd started making plans. Um, you know, He's also in a tech field so we were expecting quite a large income. Um, okay well we're gonna buy a fancy house and we're gonna buy a Tesla um, and this whole time I just hated myself and I wasn't looking forward to my future. Um, and as I reached the end of my university degree, these years of anxiety just turned into depression and I spent a year where I did very little. Um, and at some point I realized, well, why am I doing this? Why am I forcing myself into this field? I just, I just want to make art. And I don't actually want that Tesla. So um, that was a big turning point for me. And so within about six months, I just completely turned my life around. So I rented a studio, which eventually turned into the KW Artist Co-op, uh, which is a co-op studio that I share with a number of other um, artists here in Kitchener-Waterloo. Um, I'll take you on a tour sometime. Uh, it's not this. This is my home studio. 
Um, I started a course with the Society of Botanical Artists <laughs> because at the time I was still really focused on like everything needs to be academia. That brings us to now, so that was about four years ago. Um, I took two years where I was still working part-time um, in tech and now I am, I've been a full-time illustrator for almost two years now. Um, so uh, I've recently become the president of the Botanical Artists of Canada. I run a successful studio in Kitchener-Waterloo. I'm teaching classes um, locally. I have done commercial commissions and private commissions. It's really gratifying to think about all the places that my art is on, on product labels and it hanging in people's homes, people who I don't even know in different countries and different continents, that's really, really exciting. Um, so I'm really looking forward to developing my art career more, um, getting my art in some books. I hope this answers all your questions about what um, natural science illustration is and what I do and uh, what the path for getting here is. Um, don't if, if this is content that you enjoy, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and I also I have a question for you. So what did you want to do as a child? Um, and are you doing that now? Um, and if you're not, would you like to? Because I'm, you know, I guess I'm, I feel like I might be somewhat unique in that I had a really, really specific idea of what I wanted to do from when I was very young. Um, and even though, you know, it took me a while to get here, I am actually doing exactly that thing. Um, and so I wonder whether, like for me, I feel like I really knew myself as a child in a way that I only recently found out again. Um, and so, you know, I'm wondering whether that's a common thing. Um, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining me.